Good afternoon, AI community, and a welcome back to Ray Summit by AnyScale. We're here in San Francisco, California for once, which is fantastic. My name's Savannah Peterson. Delighted to be bringing you a full day of coverage here from the show floor. My next guest is certainly bringing the appropriate energy to help tell the stories that we're getting to feel live action here. Christian, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah, thanks so much, Savannah. So excited to be here. I could tell when you walked up to the <laughs> desk. Like you said, it feels like we're a part of a moment here today. It's our first Ray Summit. There's only been two, but I know they've got 75% growth this year. Pretty wild. What does it mean for you and Attentive to be here in this buzzing room? Yeah, I mean, it's amazing. I think you captured it perfectly. Like, it feels like we are here in the moment, kind of on the front lines of a, the revolution with machine learning and generative AI, and uh, for us it's attentive to be here. It's really amazing because for one, just having representation here um, kind of is a testament to a lot of the things that we're investing in as a company. Mm -hmm. um, but two, kind of what we were talking about earlier is that this is one of the conferences where I feel like I can learn and I can bring things back yeah. to my team. And I'm already sending them GitHub links and links to talks and demos and things like that. So it's just amazing to be here and see all the, the really cool things that the companies here are doing. Yes, the companies here are doing a lot of cool things, and speaking of, so is Attentive. You mentioned to me just a second ago, Attentive's been around since 2016, so you're, you're getting to that borderline venerable, we've survived enough rough seas as a startup to be, as, to be established. Clearly a new era of AI in general. What's going on at Attentive right now? Give us a lay of the land. Yeah, absolutely. So one of our goals as a company is to become the AI-powered SMS and email messaging and marketing platform. And so, just to kind of frame it a little bit, I think if we think about marketing for the last 20 years, specifically SMS marketing, let's take the, the text message. It's the, the simplest form of communication. Mm -hmm. um, if we break that down into really what drives conversion and engagement with consumers, it's personalization. Yes. Um, and we think about personalization for the last 20 years in our space, it's kind of been a form factor of a trigger and a template. And those are codified by different rules. And so you can have a rule that is, I'm a marketer and I want to go crazy and I want to make a thousand different permutations of things I can send to a thousand different people. Right. Or I can go Mad Lib style and I can uh, template things. I can say, hi, insert name, mm -hmm. take a look at insert product. And that's really the, what has been kind of the the playing field for the last 20 years. Right. Um, and one of the amazing things with the emergence of machine learning and generative AI is that it really breaks that constraint. Uh, and that's really what we're targeting um, as we think about the AI world here is how do we, for one, kind of get out of that mode of hard coding for the marketers yeah. and make it more dynamic, more open, and more free for them to customize things. And then on the flip side, drive not just personalization, but individualization. Um, and when we think about that, that's really not what the marketing world can be, but it should be. So let's dig in there, because I come from a marketing background, and I, first of all, I just got to give you a shout out for the Mad Libs example. <laughs> I, I use Mad Libs as an exercise with some of my students sometimes. I feel like it's a, getting a little generational, but I know exactly what you're talking about. What is the difference between personalization and individualization as it, as it relates to this? Yeah, absolutely. So when you think about it, from a personalization perspective, and, and the Mad Libs example I think is great because we've all done Mad Libs throughout our lives. Mm -hmm. And uh, had a silly story come out as a result in the same way someone's probably had a wonky marketing email that they received from a similar tech formula. Exactly, and when the ultimate goal here is to drive bespoke digital ex shopping experiences for our customers and for marketers to power that, Mad Libs and that kind of, let's personalize it with this one input is just not right. enough. Right. Uh, and that's really what it, kind of what it means to jump into the generative AI, into the machine learning space, is just, it kind of opens the playing field to so many different options and so many creative freedoms that marketers can now take. Yeah, absolutely. Can you give me an example of, I know we can't get too into specifics, but generally speaking, since you're seeing a lot of different people using Attentive, what are some of the, the types of experiences and, and surprise and delight, say, I might receive as an SMS that would be better than what I've historically received? Yeah, I mean, a, a good example is the content of the message, for example. Um, let's say you are a brand and you want the content of the message to reflect your brand really specifically. It's When you have a Mad Lib style, sure, you can get to a customization of that, but that's going to be a template. Um, and so for you as an end user, 
when a brand is able to customize that content and really generate it with that freedom and that dynamicism mm -hmm. to kind of be individualized, it's not just going to be like, hey Savannah, check out these shoes. It's going to be, hey Savannah, welcome to the AnyScale conference. Here are some shoes that might look awesome on the queue. Yeah, I, hey, I am I am here for that, very yeah. much here for that. <laughs> I am I am that person who definitely falls for that highly targeted, especially if it has to do with something with my stage clothes, so that was a great example. <laughs> I'll take that. So, in order to be able to do this, we're talking about a lot of data that you've got to be training your models on. How, how are you handling the scale? What are the tools you're using? Tell me about that. Yeah, absolutely. So, when we think about our data, there's a couple of challenges that we've encountered from a really technical lens here. Um, when we think about just the sheer size of data. We've sent 90 plus billion messages with brands over the, since our existence. Um, we have trillions of data points that we've tracked over the consumer life cycle, and so if you look at sheer size of data, it's not crazy compared to some of the other companies out here, but the cardinality of that data is really high. There's a lot of unique values, a lot that's of unique dimensions. That's what I'm dimensions. thinking. You're not able to standardize a lot of these vectors. Yeah. Exactly, and so that's really where the challenge comes in from the data side, is as we're looking at breaking out of the current molds, Yes, we have the data today. Yes, we're training our models on it today. Yes, we're using that as part of this kind of new frontier of, of how we message. Yeah. Um, but there's an upper ceiling here. And a lot of that has to do with not just the data, but the complexity of getting that to the model mm -hmm. and then scaling that yeah. really, really quickly and reliably um, to produce the models and the inferences as a result of that. I can imagine. So is any scale and Ray helping you out with this process? Yes, yes they are. Um, so when we were looking at... Tell me how. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so when we were looking at kind of where to go from here, there's, the way I like to think about it is there's kind of an S-curve of growth for machine learning and AI platforms where you have a lot of really strong early results at the bottom of the S-curve, you start growing into the growth phase, and then you hit the data and the compute ceiling. And we heard from, from Robert and from Jan earlier, Yeah. there's just so much complexity here. And so the beauty of AnyScale and Ray is that it really unifies from data ingest point to inference output point, that whole ecosystem and framework with kind of plug and play modules all over the place. So for me, as a ML ops practitioner and for my coworkers on the machine learning side, this is an absolute dream come true because from the data side, we can now lift all of the ceilings that we've had for our data. Uh, from the compute side, we now have access to scalable compute clusters, like a, a good story I like to tell is that I've had machine learning engineers submit bug tickets to us, say, hey, your old Kubernetes cluster, the jobs aren't working, it's not scheduling properly, and we take a look at it, and the reality was that there was just not an instance big enough in the cloud that we could schedule it on. Um, because the memory requests oh, and the number of GPUs yeah. just didn't exist. And so yeah. that's really where Ray comes in, is gives us access to that scalable compute platform, and just makes it really easy, and streamlined, and scalable and reliable. I, I hope that Ray is listening right now on the AnyScale <laughs> team behind us, because everyone wants to create tools that allow you to scale faster, especially, especially in the world of AI. It seems like these tools and the efforts you're doing, I'm looking at some of my stats here in my notes, and on the deep learning side, 5x training time reduction, 7x cost reduction, and 10x data volume, with a 10x data volume increase, oh my gosh, an 8x increase in customer coverage. These are some serious numbers. These yes. are almost orders of magnitude in every different direction. Where are we going next? That's a great question. So, to contextualize that as well. Yeah, please. We are less than a quarter into our adoption journey. And those are the numbers that we're seeing with our first use cases that we're kind of adopting with Ray and with AnyScale. Um, just, just for clarification, that's an interesting point. How, how are you measuring that 25% of your adoption journey? Is that your pathway? Is that your TAM? What, what does that mean? Yeah, so we are just kind of capturing is basically point in time, how many models are we moving over today? Cool. Um, and so kind of where we go from here is just wider spread adoption and seeing, seeing where else we can lift the ceiling. And I think one of the amazing things that we're looking at is we're kind of getting past the queue of yesterday, of things that we wanted to do and that we should be doing. Now we're addressing the things of today and then kind of what's next is what's tomorrow? We've now lifted the ceiling so far, there's so many things that we can now tackle and open to our customers and to marketers. So given that you're now at this position of scale, are you growing right now? Are you hiring for your team? This feels like a great recruitment video if you are. <laughs> I wish, we are, my team is not hiring currently. We might be soon. Um, so keep an eye out on LinkedIn if <laughs> yeah. you are. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I think it's growth across the board. And one of the amazing things is that we as a team don't really necessarily need to scale our headcount because Ray and AnyScale support us as a platform so well. 
Um, so we're a small team, we support. Keeps that overhead down. <laughs> exactly, and yeah. that was one of the reasons that we went with Ray and AnyScale is for one, AnyScale really worked out of the box for us. Mm -hmm. Really de-risked our adoption journey. Um, and then Ray is a framework to power everything. Yeah. Um, makes it really easy to just unify our code, our onboarding, our upskilling practices, um, so that we as a smaller team can then serve a larger organization of machine learning and, and generative AI folks. Absolutely, actually I want to dig in there just for a second. As, as a leader in the ML ops side, how are you managing upskilling of your team? You've talked about pivots within Attentive, lots of new tools being released pretty much every day right now in our space. How do you manage that? Yeah, it's a great question. I think. The key there is to make sure that we can operate with the agility and the speed of which the industry is kind of moving. Right. Um, from an upskilling perspective, the folks at AnyScale have been fantastic to offer us trainings, reach back to their team. Nice. Um, we've been kind of battling with Ray Data. We can reach out to their engineers directly, the people who made Ray Data and support it, um, and just ask them direct questions. So that's been fantastic for us to be able to invest in that partnership and in the technology and understand like what levers that we can pull. And then just purely from an upskilling perspective, consolidating everything into Ray makes it so simple to just invest the time. Because we're not yeah. investing into a bunch of bespoke tools across the stack that are different depending on the model. It is Ray. Mm -hmm. And it is that from start to finish, which makes it super easy to say, hey, we're just going to start knowledge transferring, documenting, making run books. Oh, yeah. Because um, it's all the same ecosystem, same framework. Well, and that optimizes the developer experience so people aren't wasting time learning new tools. Exactly. Which I'm sure everyone on your team, no matter how big it is, loves to hear. Yes. <laughs> loves, loves to see, and I think we forget about that a lot when we hear about all these new tools announced. There's someone who has to go in and learn that new thing and implement it, which can be a huge cost and, and a time suck. So looking at your website, you've got some pretty bold logos that are quite prominent household brands that I'm sure a lot of folks have seen. I won't make you tell me specific stories because I'm sure some of those are secret, but I'm curious for the general response. When you first give someone a demo of Attentive and they see what's possible with their marketing, what's that response like? It is, a lot of times it's, it's really just it's, it's hard to put into words, truthfully. Yeah. Um, but it's just a lot of excitement. Yeah. Um, there is a huge number of folks in the digital retail space who believe that generative AI is, is the next wave. And as, kind of as we talked about, right. it, it for sure is a, a revolution in the space here. And when we kind of unveil these and, and demo these to the different brands that we support, a lot of these marketers just kind of are so, so excited to get their hands on it, is, is really what it is. And they can see the potential, they can see the upside, they can see how it'll impact a lot of their engagement with their customers. Um, and so it's just yeah. pure excitement to get their hands on these tools. I, yeah, that's what I was thinking. I would think, I'm, I was just envisioning that conference room and thinking, someone must be thinking, wow. Like how many times, and there's nothing worse as a marketer, shout out to the folks on my team who do our email <laughs> marketing. There's nothing worse as a marketer than when something like that goes wrong and you end up with code that was broken and a bunch of people emailing you saying generally not very friendly things about the intelligence level of your team. It seems like this is kind of a foolproof way to do it. When do you think the everyday customer who isn't necessarily in our vortex is going to start noticing a really enhanced experience. They're probably already seeing it, but I mean, do you, I feel like there might be a little bit of a paradigm shift, or maybe it's already here, you tell me. Yeah, that's a great question. And to be totally honest with you, I don't have a very direct answer because I think we'll start to see the paradigm happening today. Mm -hmm. um, it's one of our goals and my team's personal goal is to start and continue to unlock a lot of those capabilities for our teams to then bring those features to the marketers and then to the end customers. So I think we'll start to see it very soon, um, if not already. Um, so keep an eye out as you visit websites, get emails, see SMS messaging come through. Um, you might start to notice a difference. I well, and I'm gonna I'm gonna let you know when I do <laughs> and say thanks to the team because I'm I'm here for it and I'm such a sucker or uh, mm, target for great targeted <laughs> marketing, I guess I should say, particularly late night on Instagram, but that's a whole other story. What do you hope to be able to say, since it's our first Ray Summit, we'll definitely have you back because this has been a blast. What do you hope to be able to say this time next year that you can't yet say to me on this stage right now? That's a great question. I think I would love to come back and talk about the one and a half year journey of, of unifying our AI platform. I, I think that there's, we're in such an early stage of the industry, like 
I, I think Robert was talking about the AI compute engine, and, and that's a lot of the way that we're thinking about the platform as well. And so, as these features are released as part of Ray and as part of AnyScale, I think in a year and a half, I really, really look forward to coming back and saying, this is the unified platform. And then, we kind of talked about those numbers before, let's see that scale out to everything, and then continue to raise the ceiling and talk through some insane use cases that we can start tackling as a result of that. I love that, I can't wait to have that conversation. We'd love to have a customer on here with you so we can talk about it, particularly if it's one of the many customers I see you already have that I already shop from. <laughs> and I can't wait when I, when I notice something's a little more attentive in their SMS marketing, I will, uh, I will definitely give you a shout. Thank you so much, Christian. This has been an absolute joy. Yeah, likewise. It's been a pleasure being on and I uh, really appreciate the conversation. Yes, and shout out to your team here watching, yes. and the fans and fans and anyone at home on your engineering team who might be watching this with us. And thank all of you for tuning in, wherever you might be. We're in San Francisco, California at Ray Summit by AnyScale. My name's Savannah Peterson. You're watching theCUBE, the leading source for AI news.